So, Paul, in the, in the last section, we were looking at Pluto and Pluto's friends, and that, obviously, Pluto's not alone, and that there's all of these objects, even potentially Planet X or Planet 9 out there. So, is that it? Is, is, is that the end of the solar system? Well, if we look at the scale again, so let's imagine, as we've normally been saying, that this is Jupiter's orbit. Okay. So, the Sun's in the middle and the Earth's in the middle, then that's Jupiter. Yep. Then Neptune's sort of about... Right Your side hand. of the hand. Yep. So on this scale, the Kuiper belt's out around here somewhere. So it's mostly. kind of orbiting your hand somewhere, yep. Yeah, so this sort of size. And where would Planet Nine be? About X where be? you are. Okay. All right, so. And so things like Sedna would come in here and then loop out to around yep. there. So Planet X would have to be about your distance to, okay. to warp them into their orbits. So, I mean, it's pretty far. That's a long way out. Um, but the question is could there be anything further out? Now, we can't even see Planet X. <laughs> so you might think. Sure, if there's something else out there, we're not going to be able to see it. Yep. It's going to be too far away to have much effect on anything we can see. But it turns out we do have some evidence about what's further out, and there is a lot further out. And okay. the reason we know it is because of things like this. So this is a comet? This is a comet, yes. Something you love near and dear to your heart? Yes, one of my research topics. So, and, so this lesson is going to be about comets yep. and what they tell us about what's out beyond the Kuiper Belt. Okay, so so they're actually a very good way of probing the things that we kind of can't see out there. They're the only way of probing <laughs> the things we can't see <laughs> out right. there. So good or bad, we have no choice. Okay. Um, so, I mean, comets are beautiful. Yeah. Um, here are some... They're, they're, look, to be honest, they're, they're one of the few objects in space where you just like looking at them. Yes. I mean, most comets are much harder to see than this. That's right. Um, but occasionally you get a really good one. Um, now, now, I was about to say, I noticed when you're flipping, flipping back, all of the tails are dramatically different here. Yes, we'll explain that in a sec. So, if you look at a close-up of a comet, you'll see that typically there are two tails. If you look closely here, you'll see there's a little, sort of blue, blue tail blue one, there yep. and a white one over here. Okay. Now, the blue one is ionized gas, which is being pushed away by the solar wind. Okay. We talked about these in the STARS course. Yep. Um, the white one is actually dust grains, very small grains, sort of micrometer in size. And so is it kind of like falling off, essentially, the comet as it goes around? That's right. So here's a simulation. What I'm going to do is go to the sun and I'm going to have an object come in yep. and it's going to shed dust grains. Okay. And the dust grains are not going to go in quite the same orbit because they're so small that the radiation from the sun actually pushes them into slightly different orbits. So, and again, this is different from that blue tail, the iron tail, which is kind of always pushed away directly from the sun. Well, that's produced by the solar wind. Yeah, the solar wind. And the solar wind, wind yeah. doesn't actually always, always points away from the sun. Yes. But it's magnetic field wound up in complicated ways, like we talked about in the stars. That's course. right. But this is, they, they start off moving at the same direction as where they came from. Yep. Uh, but they're having a bit of extra push because of the, actually the light from the sun. This is not the solar wind. This okay. is actually light itself can push things. Yep. Um, so if we have a look at this here, you'll see it'll start randomly emitting dust grains. So this is just bits of comet dust yes. falling off as it goes around. And it emits more and more as it gets hotter and hotter close to the sun. Yep. And they're going in orbits, but they're different orbits because the pressure from the sun is pushing them away a bit But more. it's obviously all scattered out away from the sun. Generally speaking, yes. So the tail, if you look at it closely, it doesn't, people sometimes think it drags behind the comet, and yep. it kind of does. People also think it points away from the sun, it kind of does, but really it does it sort of halfway in between those yeah, two things. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like spiraling around as it goes, yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of away from the sun and kind of behind it. Okay. It's certainly not like shooting stars, but it's a trail behind That's it. That's right. Yeah. So what's in the middle of these things? Well, there's only two comets that have actually really been visited at the middle of these things. Because comets, of course, the orbits we're talking about in a bit are very hard to get a spacecraft to them. Yep. Um, this is Halley's Comet. And the European Space Agency's Joshua Space Probe went past. And basically in the middle, there's what we call the nucleus. Yep. And we think this is just a dirty snowball. So icy bits of rocks stuck together? Yes, yeah, so it's the same sort of stuff we've talked about, Pluto and right. Callisto and all the outer planets being made out of. So a mix of rock and mostly ice, and the ice is water ice and methane and, and so is frozen it then, other things. As it gets closer to the sun, because it is ice, it heats up and melts, and so bits of it fall off. That's right. So the basic idea, as it comes close to the sun, these things start melting. Okay. And if it was just pure ice, we wouldn't see anything. Yep. But as the ice melts and turns into gas and flows away, it brings particles of tiny particles of rock, which are what we call dust, with it. Yep. And that's what we see. Now, the best observed comet is yep. uh, Trillium of 
you're asking Menko, I think that's right. I say 67p. 67p, <laughs> yeah, comets given, a period of comets given numbers. Yeah. And this was visited by the European Space Agency's uh, Rosetta. Rosetta Space mm. Probe. And here you can see it, so it's a dumbbell. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, it, it's not like a, you kind of picture a, a snowball, but it has quite a bit of structure and shape to it. So probably these were lumps in the protoplanetary nebula, the same sort of lumps that yep. ended up forming the, uh, the Kuiper belt and the asteroid belt. I mean, these presumably formed far out where they were made largely of ice, yep. and two of them bumped together at some point, probably just four billion years ago, and stuck. stuck. Um, but what you can see is that they are melting. Yep. Stuff is flowing out from them. Now, and is this close to the sun, far away from the sun? This is observed when it's fairly close to the sun. Okay. So when it's further from the sun, this wouldn't be happening. But when it's close, this is definitely happening. And here you can see a more of a close up with more of this. But it's also quite, you know, it's definitely lumpy. It looks almost more asteroid like than one may imagine instead of kind of this perfect smooth surface. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's, it's a, I mean, if you look closer still, I mean, here it's spinning around, you can see the, the gas and dust flowing off the little tiny lump of moon orbiting around it temporarily. Yep. And if you come really up close, it does look like an asteroid. The whole thing's about four or five kilometers across. So not very big. So it's absolutely tiny compared to everything else you've been looking and at. It's tiny course. even compared to the asteroids, which are already tiny. Yes. I mean, there are asteroids of size, plenty but, of them, but yeah. the ones we visited tend to be the bigger ones. That's right. Um, and there you can see some of this gas coming out. Yep. So presumably what happened was it started off as a fairly mixed up bag of ices and rock and, and then when it comes close to the sun, the ice will start boiling off, yep. leaving just the rock. So it's like an apple that's shriveling up as it dries yeah, yeah, up. Yeah, okay. You get more and more of the ices blowing yep. away, leaving the rocky sh shriveled up stuff. And the, it's getting smaller and smaller all the time until all you get left with is a cloud of a pile of rock. Okay. At so which point it stops being combat and becomes invisible. He doesn't say because essentially then there is there has to be a point where it could all just melt. Or it could be it blows itself apart. That okay. When you lose all the rock, the rest just disintegrates and forms a cloud of gravel in space. Okay. I, mean, I, I like these photos because you kind of notice that, you know, yes, yeah. there's like rocky bits, but it's also like smooth, almost sand-like on there. So there's clearly a lot of stuff going on the, the, these nuclei. And the nuclei tend to be very dark in color, probably because lots of organic stuff. Okay. I mean, they're almost, they're, they only absorb maybe... Uh, they absorb 95% of the light, so there'd be a very, very dark yeah. grey colour on Earth. Um, and here you can actually see some of the dust grains coming off. So is this you see like background stars over here? Yep. Um, but this, th these are the dust grains flying. Kind of the, the stuff foreground. flying around. It kind of looks like almost like flies or something like that. Yes. Um, so that's what's in the middle of these things. Okay. Now, so of course this leaves the puzzle that. They can't last very long. I was going to say, I mean, clearly they melt. We see that. Clearly yep. they start to not disintegrate, but bits break off of them. Yep. And if they go around the sun, surely they have a finite lifetime. Yeah, I mean, these things, every time they come past the sun, they lose a few percent of their mass, sometimes more than that. That's a lot. So that means they're only going to go past you dozens of times before there's nothing left. That's right. So this is the fundamental puzzle about comets. That we see them in the inner solar system and we see them melting. Yeah. It's like if you're at a park, you see lots of people walking past with ice creams. Ice creams do not last very long on a nope. sunny day in the park. That's right. Even if you're not eating them. So you kind of so you know there must be somewhere cold yeah. nearby which is storing them, and the people things are being removed from that cold place and taken out. So what we need is somewhere cold to store these things, and then some reason for them to leave yep. the safety of that cold place and come into the inner solar system. But they don't last very long. That's right. So that's that's the central puzzle of comets. Okay.